Hey, so good afternoon. Uh, like Kate said, I am in innovation at SANS. I think innovation uh, is probably the most fun job uh, at SANS that you can have. You get to play with all the new cool toys and do all the new cool stuff. Uh, so what I'm talking about today is um, we had a project where uh, back in September, uh, SANS instructor uh, Foster Nethercott, I think he's in the room here, but he came to us basically, he said, uh, he's building a course, SEC 535, which is um, offensive ops with AI. Um, and that's coming out later on today, just a little plug. But um, he said, what a, would it be cool if, and you always know it's gonna be a fun project if you start with, wouldn't it be cool if um, we could have a pen testing assistant that we use in these labs, which kind of like walks you through the process of pen testing, does all the uh, port mapping, gives you suggestions on what exploits to try for a given system as it comes into there. Uh, so what we did, uh, is we sketched out a thing uh, where we could have a pen testing assistant tool. Um, and the objectives of this tool was basically to have a conversational style chatbot uh, that you can talk to as you're doing this pen test to bounce ideas off of, uh, to get exploit information. Have a lot of knowledge of CVEs and other vulnerabilities from vulnerability databases, like the MITRE database of CVEs. And have a lot of knowledge about um, pen testing tools Nmap, Metasploit, uh, that kind of stuff. And not just the LLM knowledge, but we really wanted to give it, you know, all the instruction manuals about these tools so it really, really knows in depth uh, how to use this. And then be able to automatically execute uh, those tools itself uh, to give kind of like an automated feel uh, to this tool. And so from all that, uh, we got what we call Angry Beaver. And if you see Foster, he's teaching a session tomorrow morning. If you see Foster, uh, ask him to tell you the story of Angry Beaver. It's a really good story of how he got with that name. But through Angry Beaver, uh, we have, you know, starting with a conversational chatbot, we're using the OpenAI GPT-40 model. Uh, that was the latest and greatest at the time. It still is the latest and greatest for the price, uh, I think, unless you want to go, like, you know, full O1 Pro and spend $600 per token. But then we uh, decided to make this a... Uh, command line driven uh, application. All these tools like Metasploit, uh, Nmap and everything are in the command line anyway, so it makes sense just to make this a command line tool. And then it is a local Node.js program. Uh, the reason for that is I am Python's biggest hater, so Node it was. And that came to back to bite us a little bit, and I'll get to that too. So for CVE knowledge, again, we took the MITRE database and we downloaded all the JSON files of the MITRE base of every exploit that's ever been written. Uh, and we took, there you can see uh, the structure of it and everything like that from their JSON files. And we took that and we kind of made our own schema. We wanted to really control the context that went in there every time we called like the CVE database. And we can, you can see we kind of made flags for the attack complexity, whether that's low or high. What was the vector of the attack, the network? And even um, things like um, at the bottom, you can see the steps for compromise. We synthesized how would you actually do step by step the compromise uh, to exploit the CVE. And also, um, and this is just kind of like a good practice uh, that we do at SANS, you can see like there's a key on there that says, uh, is AI generated? Every data point uh, that we have in our databases and our AI tools at SANS that we use to feed uh, model context has this key in it so we can see whether this is completely AI generated or whether it's actually uh, human generated. So we can differentiate and filter and just kind of like know and source it back afterwards. And so then what we're also doing is using model tool calling. And if you're not familiar with model tool calling, it's a really, really cool feature of uh, modern LLMs now. Um, you know, we're uh, using this shell command stuff. Uh, we want the model to be able to call shell commands uh, and do all these like nmap executions by itself. Well, back in the day of old LLMs, you know, they didn't have anthropic computer use or OpenAI just came back with computer use too. So this was all the way back in like November. Um, that's how far, you know, that's how fast all these things are kind of moving. So we had to kind of like make our own tool calls to call um, system processes. And so just a quick overview of tool calls if you don't know about it, like a user will say to the LLM, do a network scan. And the LLM is, you know, it doesn't know anything about a network scan, so it's gonna say, hey, do I have a tool call for that? Because we pre-program it with the list of tools that it has access to. 
So it's going to say, do I have a tool call for that? It's going to go to his list of tools. You know, we have a network scan tool. All the examples OpenAI ever gives is like, you know, get local weather tool. And this is so you can call out to like an endpoint or an API and bring uh, context back into the model. And so the LLM will come back to the program that's running it and say, hey, I found a network scan tool, run this network scan tool with these kind of parameters and everything. And so the program running it will run those things. And then the tool call actually returns to the LLM and gives the LLM the tool call context to be able to answer that question or come back with the results of that scan. So super, super powerful. And that's what we're basically doing. Uh, anytime someone says do a network scan, we have a tool call that says, you know, launch an executable process to run this command. And so this is basically uh, the output of it. Uh, you can see at the top there it's saying, you know, can you uh, do a basic local host scan? And another little quick pointer, always be nice to your LLMs. They've proven that it actually um, helps with the results uh, that it gives back to you. So please, thank you, can never like, do this, right? So it says, you know, sure, here's, and uh, again, this is why we fed it. Uh, all the instruction manuals and everything like that, because it gives us like kind of like three different options on how to use Nmap based on the type of scan we want. And so, you know, I just say just a quick scan. It runs the Nmap tool. It shows you exactly what it's running and the commands it's using, uh, because I'm not a big fan of like, you know, how they have like these uh, agentic AI processes. Like if you use VS Code or Cursor, they put it in agent mode, and the agent mode basically says like, type this little thing, and then I'll just go off. And, and do everything, and it's kind of crazy like that. You want to have like a little uh, visibility into it. So it came back, uh, and it said, you know, you have all these ports open, 22, 5,000. Uh, and so really, we thought, wow, this is really cool. We ran Metasploit on it. We took it to uh, Hackers Teaching Hackers down in Columbus and showed it off a little bit. It was working really good. We put it in a hack the box and uh, got it to exploit Eternal Blue. So success. We got it to work. It was great. Uh, but was it? So after those um, quick little tests and everything like that, we kind of like set it loose into the wild with a few other uh, testers, and we ran into some problems. And one of those problems was, it turns out having a long running node process on your computer is kind of bad. Uh, it fills up the memory, the context of it after you get uh, to so many iterations makes it really slow, and after a while it just crashes. So in the end, Python was a better choice for that. And it did not work for interactive commands. Like Metasploit, it's its own command shell. So we were trying to figure out how to run a command shell within a command shell that would talk to the parent command shell, and it was just getting really, really messy on how to do all these uh, different interactive commands in it. And it basically didn't really work at all. And then, and this is a big thing, echoing command results through the LLM, it's a big waste of context. And context equals money. Uh, in this case. You know, you can get away with having a context of 10 to 20,000 tokens at a GPT-40 level, and it's not going to really hurt you, but once you fill up the context level and it's chopping off the top of the context because you have 200,000 context tokens in there, it gets really, really expensive uh, to do command after command and question after question. And so it just wasn't really working well. And another thing we were doing, having it um, be a shell command and having it first run the command, then return the results of the command back to the LLM, it was actually taking a lot longer because it wasn't just returning our tool call um, results of Nmap scan or whatever like that. Uh, it was actually, you had to wait for it to actually get that into the context and then type out the result back to you. So it's just a lot easier to just get it an instantaneous uh, shell command back. And so we kind of reworked it. Uh, we ditched our command line tool, and then we made this web page. And this web page is kind of like a split view. We have a fully working command uh, line prompt terminal on the right-hand side there. And then we have the traditional kind of chat interface uh, that you would expect on the left-hand side. And so what this uh, really gave us the ability to do is we could go type in commands to the terminal, and we could link the terminal and the chat window together, uh, since we have this kind of like overarching uh, web page here. So if I ran, I got really good at Nmap um, doing all this kind of stuff. If we ran Nmap on the right hand side in the terminal, we could echo those results back into the chat. And then now, since we got our results, we can start asking questions uh, through the chat about that command. And this worked bi directionally. We can actually ask the chat to run the Nmap command, and it would be reflected in the terminal. And then again, 
you can go back and uh, ch chat with those, uh, those results. And also you can see here, uh, the second uh, little chat bubble down, we have another tool call in here that we added, and that's like the check command safety tool. So anytime you were typing in commands, it was actually connecting or um, checking if those were a safe command uh, to do. And the reason for that is, if you've ever bitten, bitten by the uh, rm-rf star uh, command, you wanna make sure that you really, really, really wanna run that command and you're not asking the LLM to just go wild and take your commands uh, to do that. So we were able to uh, introduce these nice little actions and steps and guidance along the way uh, in this pen testing tool. And then also, uh, we introduced the, um, the concept of like a um, best practices guide. And this was a window where you as an individual could do your own kind of like augmenting of the model context and the model of instructions on how you wanted to uh, use these tools if you were in a certain situation or if you had a certain style of uh, how you wanted the model to go ahead and uh, run these commands and walk you through this pen testing. And then uh, we added uh, this um, kind of like thing where in the terminal, if you just wanted to highlight a little text or highlight um, a certain section of what's in the terminal and put it in the model context graphically, you can see it's all shaded on the right-hand side, the list of ports, uh, whether they're open and what services they're on. And then the left-hand side on the chat there, we're echoing that back out into the terminal, um, into the chat, so you can actually feed the model context from the terminal back into the chat uh, to just get very selective on what you wanted to return there. And so that's basically how we built a little pen testing AI system. <laughs>